Hello everyone, thank you for joining Radiant Vision Systems presentation on MicroLED measurement. Here we'll discuss systems and methods for measuring highly accurate pixel level luminance and color values, which not only provide a means for evaluating the quality of a MicroLED display, but enable effective uniformity correction processes. Let's get started. First, a brief introduction to MicroLEDs and their applications. As the name suggests, MicroLEDs are very small LEDs typically smaller than 50 micrometers, with some as small as three. Micro-LEDs are emissive, which means they are individually driven and produce their own light output. Each micro-LED in a display is a subpixel that produces light for a display pixel. The unique signal of millions of subpixels in a micro-LED display must be controlled to ensure proper output at each pixel. Commercialization of micro-LED displays is imminent, but there are hurdles to overcome in terms of production quality and efficiency. There are a number of benefits that microLEDs offer for displays with similarities to LEDs and OLEDs, but also with advantages over those technologies. For instance, microLEDs offer high luminance, contrast, pixel density or PPI, and wide color gamuts, making them attractive for applications where display visibility is critical. Like OLEDs, they do not require a backplane, enabling them for flexible and curved display applications. They require relatively low power to operate, are stable over a range of operating temperatures, and have long life cycles. These benefits offer improved visual performance for a range of applications. We're all familiar with the large format television displays that have emerged recently, but high visibility and flexibility offer benefits for other implementations like foldable phones and automotive panels, and high resolution and brightness are beneficial for AR, VR, and MR headsets, as well as transparent and head-up displays. As I mentioned, there are challenges associated with microLED production, and ensuring quality is a major one, especially when you're looking at guaranteeing the output of millions of individual emitters. One of the major challenges with microLEDs is variability. As we mentioned, each microLED is an individually driven monochromatic subpixel. Voltage and current affect the luminance and chromaticity of these individual diodes. Variability is therefore common, causing uneven appearances across the display. Even microLEDs of the same color in a display can exhibit wavelength shift due to different driving conditions. Here in a single display, we see an illustration of how color non-uniformity might appear. We've magnified the pixels A, B, and C, and on the right, we've illustrated the spectral data for A, B, and C to give a visual example of their variation. This creates the need for measurement and correction. To address uniformity issues across pixels, the procedure applies these steps. Using an image-based measurement system, we must first register each pixel in the display, or create a region of interest, or ROI, that isolates each pixel for measurement. Second, we must measure the average luminance and color within that ROI. And then finally, we need to compute and apply a correction factor, adjusting the output of the measured pixel to align with the output of other pixels in the display to a standard tolerance. Correcting uniformity in display must be based on accurate measurement data. The key challenge in this process is how do we ensure accurate measurement data? Accurately measuring microLEDs means addressing another challenge. MicroLEDs are extremely small, and furthermore, as the PPI of these displays increases, the chance for measurement error also increases when the measurement of one pixel incorrectly influences the measurement of a neighboring pixel because of low imaging resolution. This image illustrates how we are using an imaging system to try to isolate each display pixel and maximize the number of squares which are image sensor pixels within each circle. The better we can do this, the better our measurement data. This is the kind of image we get from a pixel level measurement. On the left, we're pointing out the large bright area is a single display pixel. The small squares are the image sensor pixels from our image-based measurement system. The number of sensor pixels applied to each display pixel depends on the image sensor resolution versus the display resolution. We need to maximize the signal we get from the sensor pixels that are applied to a single display pixel to ensure accurate measurement. So there are two criteria for measurement accuracy. One, the pixel registration must be precise enough to isolate an individual pixel. And two, the pixel measurement must be accurate for each ROI factoring only and all of the signal produced by a single isolated pixel. What happens if we don't have precise registration or accurate measurement? Well, this means that the calculations we make for correction of each of our display pixels will be incorrect. This is the garbage in, garbage out principle. If we start with bad data, we're going to get a bad result. If we apply corrections based on bad data, this can actually make corrected displays look worse than before, like what's shown on the right here. 
The first step to measurement for microLED correction is going to be isolating each pixel in a measurement image, which we refer to as pixel registration, and then maximizing the value we can acquire from each pixel area, which we call pixel measurement. For this, we need to optimize imaging precision. Radiant offers a range of solutions and methods to address imaging precision for microLEDs. Typically applied in wafer-level inspection, a microscope lens is used to magnify microLED subpixels for extreme detail in a measurement image. Two other methods are applied for panel-level inspection using standard imaging optics. We'll discuss Radiant's spaced pixel and fractional pixel measurement methods in the following slides. This slide also illustrates the importance of quality throughout microLED device production and optimizing methods for each measurement scenario. Each method provides benefits and disadvantages in terms of precision, speed, and complexity. Used at the chip and wafer stage, a microscope lens is able to measure the luminance and chromaticity values at each subpixel. Because of this, it's useful for characterizing individual microLEDs or a small set of microLEDs. When we reach the panel level of the display, now we're looking at characterizing the uniformity of all pixels across the display at once. Spaced pixel measurement is one way to better isolate microLEDs when the granularity of the imaging system is limited. What this method does is increase the effective resolution of our measurement system so we can apply more image sensor pixels across our measurement image and get more detail per pixel. During spaced pixel measurement, a series of dot matrix patterns illuminates sets of pixels until values have been acquired for all pixels in the display. The drawback of this is slower cycle times. To increase cycle times for measurement, Radiant has provided another panel level inspection method. In this method, we're taking a single image of a display to increase speed, knowing that our effective imaging resolution relative to the display will then be lower. In this example, now we have about 2x2 two two image sensor pixels covering a single display pixel. We could increase this effective resolution by taking multiple images using the space pixel method, which increases our measurement time, or using a microscope lens, which doesn't capture the entire display at once. But here we're looking for efficiency. First, the fractional pixel method addresses the process of isolating or registering each pixel in the display using limited image sensor pixels. The ROI should be positioned in such a way to cover the entire display pixel and exclude all of its neighbors. Ideally, the middle of the ROI would end up at the center of the display pixel. However, in the traditional method as shown on the left, the ROI is centered on an image sensor pixel. Now we're excluding significant areas of the display pixel and capturing a lot of area outside of it. In the fractional pixel method shown on the right, we have a new way of centering the ROI based on a floating point. We use data from the sensor pixels to find a center of gravity in terms of luminance output and center the ROI to this center of gravity. Now our ROI is much more precise and centered on the display pixel rather than on the sensor pixel. Next, the fractional pixel method addresses how to optimize the measurement. In our 2x2 two two sensor pixel example, we need to make the most of the limited image sensor pixel area within the ROI to determine precise values. In the image on the left, we show the traditional whole pixel approach. In terms of measurement, we're telling the software to use 100% of the signal for the sensor pixel outlined in red at the top, because it's more than halfway within the ROI. But we throw out the signal from the sensor pixel outlined in red to the lower left, because it's more than halfway outside of the ROI. Clearly, we risk losing significant data by ignoring partial pixels when using a small ROI or capturing too much information, like the luminance of a neighboring pixel, by using a larger ROI. Using a fractional approach, we can be much more sophisticated in our measurement process. Shown in the image on the right, signal is factored into the measurement by weighting the area of each image sensor pixel within the ROI. This signal is summed to determine an overall value for the ROI, which gives a very accurate luminance and color value for this display pixel without factoring in any of its neighbors. In a recent study, Radiant proved the effectiveness of the fractional pixel method versus traditional whole pixel methods. This plot shows the normalized luminance measured by whole and fractional pixel measurement methods on an image that achieves about 3x3 three three sensor pixels per display pixel. By comparison, we give a reference measurement from an image that achieves 30x30 30 30 sensor pixels per display pixel for the same row of pixels on a display. As we can see, the fractional measurement on the orange line closely matches the reference measurement on the gray line, demonstrating that the fractional pixel method achieves measurement accuracy equivalent to an extremely high-resolution measurement using much fewer image sensor pixels per display pixel. The whole pixel method shown on the blue line 
deviates much more from the reference due to the fact that the ROI are not precisely aligned to each pixel and values within each ROI are not properly weighted. In summary, if we need to optimize speed by taking a single image measurement of our display, a fractional pixel method can still give us the accuracy we need for correction processes. There's another component to measurement that we must address. The measurement system needs to be able to measure values according to a standard calibration and continue to achieve color accuracy even as micro-LED colors shift from the original calibrated value. The CIE has defined a standard for scientifically quantifying the physical properties of light and colors as perceived by a human observer. This enables accurate mathematical representation and reproduction of colors, and we call this science colorimetry. The measurement system we use must adhere to the CIE color matching functions to ensure accurate values. Here we see a breakdown of a radiant imaging colorimeter. In this case, color filters are integrated in a rotating filter wheel. This tristimulus filter system provides a spectral response that we can see in the dotted lines in the plot to the right, which follow extremely closely with the solid lines of the standard CIE color matching functions. In order to achieve a spectral response that aligns with the CIE color matching functions, all measurement systems require calibration. Radiance imaging colorimeters employ a unique set of calibration algorithms called Enhanced Color Calibration, or ECC. These algorithms use a 12-element correction calibration matrix, which provides accurate color measurement over a larger area of the color space. As we've discussed, it's common for micro-LEDs to exhibit variability from diode to diode. Once we calibrate to one region, we want to be able to accurately measure the emitting color and any shifts across the display. This chromaticity diagram on the right illustrates that goal, showing an expected accuracy range for an ECC calibrated imaging colorimeter. ECC is calibrated to region B and remains accurate for wavelength shifts from region A to region C. To test the accuracy of Radiance Tristimulus Imaging Colorimeter with ECC calibration, Radiant conducted a study. Several colored and white LED test sources were illuminated in an integrating sphere. To simulate source variation for each LED, the current level was adjusted, causing color shifts. A Tristimulus Imaging Colorimeter was paired with a reference spectroradiometer and mounted side by side taking simultaneous measurements of each LED at each current level as the LED color shifted. Here's the test data acquired for one of the colored LEDs in the study. In this table, we show the values measured by the tristimulus system and by the reference meter. The variation between the two systems is reported under the results section on the right. The yellow row of cells indicates the calibration condition for the LED. Plotting these wavelength measurements, we can clearly see the accuracy of the tristimulus system. On the x-axis, we're showing the true LED source variation at each current level as measured by the reference meter. This shows a plus or minus nanometer change in dominant wavelength from the calibration point as current level was adjusted. The tristimulus measurement accuracy is shown on the y-axis as a plus or minus nanometer difference from the reference measurement at each current level for each LED source. The takeaway is that the tristimulus system with ECC can achieve accurate color measurement with an error of less than plus or minus 2 nanometers for dominant wavelength, with most measurements falling within plus or minus 1 nanometer accuracy. A combination of solutions and measurement methods yields our ultimate result here, accurate measurement values that enable a perfect correction process and ultimately a flawless display. This set of images gives a real example where radiance methods have been applied to a microLED display panel. In the before image, we can observe the variability from differences in the microLED output. By precisely measuring these values, we can calculate an accurate correction factor to adjust each microLED, which yields the perfectly uniform display on the right. In this case, the microLED panel is 0.7 inches with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and a microLED size of 2 micrometers. Measurement and correction were performed using a Radiant Prometric 29 megapixel imaging photometer and TrueTest software. In summary, ensuring micro-LED uniformity requires precision and accuracy. Radiant offers an advanced set of tools for measurement of micro-LEDs, which ensure the accuracy of correction processes. Starting with prometric imaging colorimeters and calibration techniques, we maintain color measurement accuracy to CIE functions across highly variable sources. Measurement methods like spaced and fractional pixel optimize the precision of the values captured from measurement images, outperforming the measurement accuracy of competitive methods and systems. The combination of these solutions and methods yield micro-LED displays with entirely uniform appearances. As display manufacturers look to leverage the benefits of micro-LEDs, we're ready to address the challenges with accuracy and efficiency. 
With that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. If you'd like to learn more, I encourage you to visit our virtual booth or contact us at our email or website listed here. Thank you.